All right, so I'm pretty well stuck here. Um, my head feels like it's going to explode. Looking at the computer screen makes my head hurt so badly. Um, people keep telling me to do things. I tell them that these things don't work. These people haven't gone through it, and I have, but they somehow magically know better than someone who's been through it. I'm not going to tell a woman what it's like to give birth to a child. Do you know why? I've never given birth to a child. So Starbucks is about to close. They're my internet. When they close, I have to drive my vehicle over there so that I don't get in trouble. We already know what happened at the last Starbucks. I got kicked out because they wanted to assume I was staying the night there. But I wasn't. I was staying at the Walmart. It was eating up all my gas going back and forth between Walmart and Starbucks. I still wasn't able to get that police report thing working. Like, I'm, I'm not tech savvy. I'm not. I'm not really even game savvy. I, I play video games because I can see progress there. If I win something in a video game, it's mine. I get to keep it. It's not going to get stolen. It's not going to be destroyed by the rain or taken by the police or get towed. So the guy this morning who lied to me, his name is Jerome. That's the name of the uh, Starbucks employee here at 1723 72nd Street South, Tacoma, Washington at the Starbucks. So my phone that I lost that had all the evidence in it last year um, in June the evidence that I had on that phone that I lost in June um, it was synced to the computer that the uh, Adams County detectives had the one they were supposed to take to me to Boulder the next day but a year and a half later they not a goddamn thing about 30 different stories on why I couldn't get it back It's so fucked up. I tried to record everything I did. Just a lot of complications with storage space and memory space and... And have the money to make duplicates and make copies and do all this other stuff that... I mean, I, I had to do my lawyer's job because they wouldn't do their job and they wouldn't let me do their job either. They used the uh, mentally ill tag to prevent me from defending myself in court. It's some goddamn bullshit is what it is. The phone that was uh, taken earlier, it's sync to the computer I have now, but I had to shut it down so they can close up at Starbucks. And the officers aren't going to do anything until I fill out a report on their electronic bullshit. They keep telling me to fill out this electronic bullshit. It gives me nothing but fucking problems. That's what people aren't getting. They keep telling me what to do. I need someone to fucking show me how to do this stuff. Show me how. I, I didn't grow up with computers. I grew up in institutions where we were lucky to see one. If we did see one, it had our med count on it.
I mean, fuck. I'm doing the best that I can within my abilities. Within the limits of my abilities physically. Within the limits of my abilities mentally. Within the limits of my abilities financially. All these people have done everything to destroy me physically, mentally, and financially. And then I got friends who don't keep their word. And it doesn't bother them in the least bit that them not keeping their word fucked me so greatly and so severely. Wasted so much of my time and so much of my resources that I can never get back. I needed those people to be honest and forthright and trustworthy and none of them were. And then they want to be pissed off because I told their stories. Well, you know what? As soon as your story was intertwined with mine, it became our story. And it's my story to tell, same as it is yours. If you didn't keep your word, you don't get to bitch about me shaming you for not keeping your word. When I say I love you, that doesn't mean I'm not going to be pissed off at you. If you do something fucked up, yeah, I'm going to be pissed. I was pissed when people did it to you. And I did something about it when they did it to you. Now, didn't I? What did you do when it happened to me? You made excuses. So I got to wait till morning. Since uh, the phone that was stolen this morning... That man lied to me. His name is Jerome. I didn't call the police. I just kept on trying to call my phone through Google Voice. I don't know if it's fucking working or not. I do know that, according to my computer, the uh, telephone, because it is synced to the computer, the telephone is in Seattle, Washington. That's out of jurisdiction. You're starting to see what kind of issues I'm having. Meanwhile, that phone is full of evidence. I could lock it out, but then that runs the risk of these people ditching my phone. And then I'll never see it again. If I leave it on, at least they might try to charge it and use it until it's been used up. That'll give me a chance to hopefully tomorrow morning get the police to take a look at the footage here take a picture of the woman who took it get that to the seattle police not that they will and this is a lot of hope in that these guys will do their jobs and after them wanting me to do their jobs i'm not seeing much hope see that's what happens they put a little red flag on you when it says that you assaulted a police officer and you give them your name and they look you up it's got that red flag there, and they fucking blackball you. But, that's not the only time that situations like that happen in my life. <laughs> when I was in Virginia, and uh, Alicia wanted me to change over my flip phone that I, I do have now. She wanted to change my flip phone over to Natalie's old broken phone. It took like two and a half hours. It, it took a really long time. She was pissed off that it was taking so long. And she literally quit her job 10 minutes after that. That's not a joke. It might not have even been 10 minutes. I mean, she was so fucking frustrated with it. And I felt so bad for Alicia. Here she is trying to give me this wonderful gift. And it's been nothing but a pain in the ass for her. And I, I let her know right then and there. I said, welcome to my life. This is how most things in my life are. They're, they're easy for you. They're complicated when it comes to me. Alicia worked at a cricket store. She could change over a phone, change over the phone number in like five minutes. But when it came to changing my phone number over, it took two and a half hours. Like, I'm, I'm trying to get help here, and I'm going completely fucking insane because I can't do everyone's fucking jobs for them. I can't take care of myself, let alone these 10,000 other expectations that everybody from my dad to Lana to Amanda to Miss Jerry to Jesus fucking Christ, there's only one of me. 
There is only one of me. It's hard to make the right decisions when you don't have the right information. The judges didn't have all of the information and they don't care. The police don't have all the information. They surely do care. They're going out of their way not to look at it. Same thing with my public pretenders. This is not a fucking country worth living in. This is everything that World War II veterans fought against. And you guys want to God bless America. Let's make it great again. Fuck you. There's a reason I didn't go running around stealing people's shit. It's because when you're homeless, people steal your shit all the fucking time and you just have to learn to get over it. The problem is I'm trying to fight a case here. I'm trying to get an honest goddamn day in court and every piece of evidence counts. Without me being able to show that evidence, people get to show that I was an asshole, but they don't have to show why. That's where the painting a picture comes in, the frame job. I've been trying to show the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth since the very start. But the police won't look. No matter what, they won't look. Now, Connor here, he he said that it's a lot more complicated than it needs to be. I said, yeah, that's the way it is when you're homeless. He said he'd stop and help me, but he's training people tonight. And that's the thing, is that these people all have lives. The only people who are going to take time out of their lives to actually do those things are family. And only if your family actually gives a shit. My dad only gives a shit if I do what he wants. He doesn't care what's actually going on. He doesn't care about the scenario. He has it in his head that he knows 100% what's going on, and that's just the way it is. It's set in stone. He's God. And he's not. When I read about the Jesus in the Bible, I like him. I like him a lot. Then when I hear from Christians and they talk about their Jesus and then they talk about their fellow man it makes me ashamed of them as human beings. It's like they never read the book. I read the book. It doesn't say what a lot of people think it does. There's a lot of parts in the Bible that the moral of the story is the exact opposite of the part that everybody's so obsessed about. It's because they just took the one little part out. And that's the word of God, right? That one little part out of a big phrase and a big paragraph. And that one little part is the part that you pick out because it can be used to twist and hate and hurt the people that you don't like. The same as they did to me in court. Slandered my name without me even there. Went out of their way at every step of the way not to look at evidence, not to allow me to make a report to the police. And then the police, they always want me to do it electronically. Or they want me to come in, and when I come in, they fucking assault me and charge me with assault. Or force drugs into me or put me on fucking suicide watch. I'm trying to talk to the police. If I'm trying to talk to the police, I'm obviously not busy trying to kill myself. If I'm trying to talk to the police, obviously I'm hoping for some reason to have hope enough to exist. But they let me down time after time after time after time. I grew up in the system. When I was raped, I told the police. Or rather, I tried. See, at first I told the staff, they didn't care. And then uh, the police brought a kid in. And I tried telling that police officer what was going on. 
I got slammed to the floor for that. Injected with Ativan. It was beautiful. I'm doing the best I can with the resources I got. But you got to understand. I go to the cops. They don't do shit. They never have. They never gave a fuck. When you don't have money. They see you as someone to prey on. Every time you park in a parking lot, they come and harass you because you might be a drug dealer. I have to wake up and move around a couple times a night so that my vehicle isn't sitting in the same place. So that I might not get a ticket, might not get my vehicle towed and the evidence that's in it and the tools that I've collected for trying to make the world a better place, trying to trying to make my castle. I almost had the money. I was so close. I mean, I was maybe three months from having the money to get some land of my own, either buy a house from Megan Christie in Chapel or buy that rocky land up there in, uh, I want to say San Luis County. Colorado. I, I had it set up. I, I had a plan. I was fucking working on it. But after Natalie died, those people who said they'd be there in my corner, they weren't. They could only be there in words only on Facebook. They could make all sorts of empty promises, but they just couldn't follow through. Aunt B couldn't answer her door. When she knew that I had important mail with a deadline on it, and she couldn't answer her door. Just trying to find a place where I can have mail sent and actually receive it. Like Shannon Alvarado kept on telling me I could have my mail sent there. But I couldn't go to see Shannon Alvarado. What the hell am I going to have her do? I need that evidence. I don't need Shannon to have it. <coughs> if I send it to Shannon. See, I, I'm in Colorado at that point in time. I need this stuff sent to me in Colorado. So I need an address in Colorado. I can't leave the state of Colorado because of the assault against me by Officer Lola Ty. So Shannon's like, you, you can send it to me in California. Lots of people wanted me to send my evidence to them in all sorts of places. Sean, you should send it to me. Sean, you should send it to me. Why? Are you going to do anything with it? I was trying to send it to you so you could help me force the police to take a look. That was the whole intent and fucking purpose of speaking out on fucking Facebook and YouTube. It's to get actual fucking help. So many people said they'd go in with me and never did. And then there's witnesses that just want to be assholes because I called them out for lying to me. I called Graham out for lying to me. I called Tabby out for lying to me. And I'm not going to feel bad about that. I want them in my life. But they don't get to be in my life. Because they didn't come forward. And because they didn't come forward in a timely and efficient manner. I can't see them. All of these people from Aaron Cockerham to Graham to Tabby. To Shauna Sinclair, Miss Peaches, Katie Cahill. They all could have made a police report, and they all should have. Why didn't they? Most of them tried. Caramia claimed that she tried, and the police wouldn't take her report either. She's not separated from her family. Aunt B isn't separated from her family. She gets to see her husband every day. Melissa Melissa gets to see her kids every day. 
Tabby gets to see her kids every day. Graham gets to see Tabby every day. My brother, he gets to see his friends every day. Alicia can see her family every day. I haven't been able to see mine since I left Virginia. I just didn't have time. They were just friends on Facebook. When I had a good back and I could work hard. And I did it for cheap or even free. You know, people, people loved me. But when my back was fucked, they all changed. And then they wanted to be angry at me for changing. Well, excuse me, I had to. When my back was fucked, I healed up behind a dumpster in Boulder, Colorado. When Natalie's leg got fucked up, she repaired herself up at her mom's house. When most of these people ended up sick, family took them in. And instead of treating them like shit, they tried to understand. My dad did not try to understand. I tried telling him what was going on. He was telling me, that's not the way it is, Sean. Dad, I've been through it. I've been going through it for a year and a half. Yeah, Dad, that is the way that it is. I didn't make my dad sell an AR-15 to an undercover cop. I didn't make my dad sell cocaine. It doesn't register to him that myself and my older brother went through the hell that we went through because of his cocaine habit. Not my older brother's cocaine habit. My dad's cocaine habit. And my mother's cocaine habit. Please fucking kill me. Jesus Christ. I'm tired of this. I mean, this evidence should have been in the hands of the police before I had an opportunity to lose it. Trying to hold on to this shit for a year and a fucking half. Hoping that a cop will do their fucking job. Just one. Just one good cop somewhere. I was hoping Brent Jefferson was still a cop when I went to chapel last. He's not. When the Nazis did this, the German people supported it. Now that America's doing this, the American people seem to support it. And the ones who aren't supporting it aren't doing anything about it. There are these words on Facebook. 